Eric Burgess here, and we've been given a pretty devious integral. It is the integral of z over 10 raised to the z dz. And the reason I say this is devious is because you got to be pretty on top of your game when it comes to using log properties with something like this. So first we see that it's two, we've got here two functions, and it looks like a quotient, but we can always rewrite it as a product by simply pushing one off to the side, or we could make it 10 to the negative z times z. It's another way of doing it. I'm gonna opt for this way, just cause it might be a bit easier to see the exponents is positive as we go through this. So first things first, this looks like a integration by parts kind of a thing right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use u and we're gonna let that just equal z because that'll just take care of the z real easy. That means that dv has to equal one over 10z dz. All right, so the easy part's just the derivative of, of u, du, z is gonna become one, so we're just gonna be left with dz. This bit over here is going to be a bit trickier. We need to take the integral of 1 over 10z dz. So the integral of this, uh, looking at this, we go, okay, well, what can we do with this? So it's hard because the thing that we're integrating is up here. And in fact, you know what we're going to do? We are going to write it as 10 to the negative z dz. So this this is like just kind of a challenge here. What do we do with this? Well, let's do something sneaky to try and move this z around. Let's say that if we take this thing and if we raise it e and then we take a natural log of it, we're going to get 10 to the minus z like this dz. So it's still the exact same thing, right? Because the e and the natural log will cancel out. So what this lets us do is now we can pop the negative z off. So now we're going to get e to the negative z, the natural log of 10 dz. This is easier to take a integral of because we know what the integral of e to the x is, or in this case, e to the negative z. There's just some extra stuff attached to it, but this is an integral we can do. If we do this integral... We know that e to the x is its own derivative, which means that its integral is just going to be a copy of itself. And then normally when we take a derivative, right, we multiply by whatever's up here. But in this case, since we're integrating, we're going to divide by it. So we're going to wind up with the derivative of this is just going to be minus the natural log of 10. And we established that this thing, we could rewrite this another way. So, right, we could say this now. We could say, well, let's move this, the negative z back. So we're going to get natural log of 10 to the negative z over negative natural log of 10. And then we could say, well, these cancel out. They're inverse operations. And we're left with 10 to the minus z over the natural log of 10. And this is negative. So this is what we have right now as our integral. So it's kind of a, a long way to go about it, but by using this inverse relationship between e and the natural log, we're able to pull off integrals like this. So now that we know what, what v is, this is all v, we can finally write out the next step. So the integral from the top is going to equal z times... 10 to the negative z, my pen smeared, I didn't know that was possible on a pad, 10 to the negative z over the negative natural log of 10. And then we are going to subtract the integral of 10 to the negative z over negative natural log of 10. Now the great thing about this uh, and then we're going to have a dz here from, from this piece right here. So the great thing about this part is, well, na the negative natural log of 10, well, that's just, that's just a constant. So we can pop that right out. And we've already done 10 to the negative z integral. It's, uh, it's this integral right here, right? It's just another way of writing it. So we're going to get the exact same thing coming out. So we actually have the answer already. 
we can say that this is equal to z times 10 to the negative z over negative the natural log of 10. Now these two negatives are going to cancel out, so we're going to get a positive here, plus, and we're going to get a, a big fraction, right? So on the bottom, we're going to have this, because we pop it out as a constant, negative natural log of 10. Or it's just natural log of 10. We took care of that negative. But the, the integral of the negative 10 to the negative z is going to be this again. So we're going to get 10 to the negative z. And then this bottom is the negative natural log of 10. So we're going to have another natural log of 10. And the negative on this one is going to cancel out our positive and make this negative. So I switched this back to a negative. Now we can do some simplifying. We can combine these natural logs. We can move this negative 10z down. So let's do some stuff. So right, z will stay on top. On the bottom, we're going to have 10 negative z. Let's, all right, let's write the negative natural log of 10 first, because it'll look weird if that's after. Times 10 to the positive z, right? We just move it down, minus. And then right here, we're going to have 1 on top over the 10 to the z, just move it down, times the natural log of 10 squared. Now, this is our integral. Oh, one thing I forgot to do here. Forgot to add a plus C. So we're going to add that on. And that is how you do this problem. Almost forgot a plus C. I, I, I. So for this kind of a problem, again, it's just really important that you notice this. And I was tempted to do the proof of the fact of the integral A to the X, where A is just some integer and X is, you know, what we're integrating, DX that that's equal to a to the x over the natural log of a. But I decided to just do the problem as is. We actually did a more difficult version because a is, you know, a fraction and x is negative. Well, in this case, we have a negative z. So this is actually a little more difficult, but if you really want to get it as an extra problem you could do to, to really grasp it is to prove this. Prove that this is true and you're going to use the exact same technique that we used here with e to the natural log. Same steps. It's even a little shorter and easier because, uh, again, we're not dealing with a fraction or anything. So, and this is this is totally general. So you could just remember this rule as well and use it. The problem is this isn't the kind of rule I memorize. Like this is something if it came up on a test, I would I would use this kind of a method. It, it'd be easier for me to just derive it than it would be for me to remember all these rules there's just so many of them so knowing the logs is a little more fundamental than knowing that particular integration if you have any questions about this let me know down in the comments subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and we'll catch you in the next problem